guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, supportive vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Lots to do today. Part one, I'm going to try and get a harvest and feed of the older ENC bed. Then we're going to go look at the new ENC bed. And honestly, we're getting ready to move all of its occupants to the vermi wedge. So I need to get that ready for that. Then we have to make sure that we get everything cleared up and have room for the plants that are being displaced due to the vermi bag wedge. So hang on, this is gonna be a process. Here we are, we have my one quarter inch screen. Nope, never did find the old one. Um, elves, I don't know, somewhere lives with the uh, extra socks that get lost in the dryer. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to do a bit of a harvest on this to make some room. This is pretty done, and since it's furnace season, it is finally getting to the part where I can get a decent harvest out of this without it clumping up. That's kind of what happens, like if you look at this part right here, if your castings get overdone, like the worms rework them too many times, you're going to end up with hard little balls of casting like this and sometimes when they they get too hard you just have to get them wet again and, and start them at the beginning and unfortunately if you let the whole bin get too far finished and they turn into these little pellets you may have to just add some cardboard shreds or some coconut coir or peat and mix in the whole thing and then give it another month and try and harvest it again. Otherwise, you're never going to get those particles apart. Uh, put in the comments below, what do you do when you have stuff that goes too far and you can't do anything with it? So I'm going to take all the stuff that I've got on the top here and I'm going to put that in a, a bucket separately and get that wet again. Because the top of this is, you know, it has got pretty dry. It's been about three weeks, four weeks since we've been into this bin and the furnace has been on um, many of the times or many of the weeks since we've been in here. So you see all these hard pellets. I'm not going to try and make the worms figure out how to eat these. I'm going to get those wet again, help them out. And I'm only going to harvest down far enough until I start seeing some worms. That's how you know when it's time to stop when you're harvesting a wedge. The whole point of the wedge is that the worms will move out on their own, and if they haven't moved, you know, they're not done yet, which means don't fight nature, just have a little patience. I think this is still going to be a pretty good harvest overall. Also, if it starts getting kind of wet and things start balling up like this, it's also time to stop because that means that it is not at a good enough moisture for you to sift. If you're not sifting, you can continue on until you get to the worms. So yeah, it is, it's getting a little damp and I'm starting to get worms. So it's time to quit harvesting. So I still probably got, I don't know, maybe a gallon or two, four liters, five liters, something like that. All right, now let's take a look and see what this end of the bend is doing. We'll give it a little bit of a fluff and start moving things down the wedge. If you ever have questions on how the wedge works, let me know and I will help you out the best I can. For me, it's turned out to be the best system. Let's take a look. So I'm just gonna go through here. There's very few worms in this. You can tell that it's, it's pretty far finished but the top part gets pretty dry, but the bottom part, because the bin is so deep, it's about a foot deep. And uh, I will go ahead and put the metric on top if I don't know it off the top of my head. So what we're doing is digging down to the bottom and you can see this part right here. That's why we're doing this. This is why we're getting all the way down into the bottom and mixing it with the stuff on the top is so that the moisture becomes homogenous so that you don't end up with super dry stuff on the top and super wet stuff on the bottom. And again, this is more important if you plan to sift 
and in my case I sift because I'm adding this to plants and I want it to look nice. I don't want chunks of this and that sticking on top of my plants. But also it gives me an opportunity to get the stuff that has not been finished or consumed and have that go through the system one more time. So I'm still finding some chunks down here all the way in the bottom. So I'm gonna fluff those up. But as you can see, even this part here that I didn't um, do any harvest for is still very, very um, free of worms. So I'm gonna build this back up. And then we can back up and look at the next section. This is probably about six months old, five or six months old. And that is about how long it takes most of the food to get finished up with the exception of some avocado shells and pits. This next part we're gonna look at is about three to four months old. Okay, here we are. I'm just gonna kind of move any of the big stuff down to the, the feeding end. And as I'm going through it, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep picking anything that's big and move it down to the feeding end. I'm gonna start seeing a lot of worms here. Not a lot, a lot, but probably enough that I would not consider this good for harvest. Now whether they're staying here because they like the moisture or if they're staying here because there's still some food they want to eat, your guess is as good as mine and they aren't telling. Okay, here we go. Now this is European night crawlers and if you're thinking to yourself, man those are some small European night crawlers, worms kind of adjust to the system that they live in similar to fish. If they have a big area and not a lot of competition and enough food, they'll get bigger. But if they're in a system like this and there's a lot of competition, the worms will eventually end up being about the size of a red wiggler. And red wigglers can be as small as a blue worm. So if your worms aren't keeping size, no, you didn't necessarily get in, uh, blue worms or whatever in your bin. It's probably just because they are becoming over time smaller and smaller due to the population density. Okay, so now we're getting into the like a, a part that's been fed maybe two months ago. But I'm still doing the same thing. I'm wanting to get some air in there. Uh, worms do breathe air just like us, only they do it through their skin. Ooh, wait a minute. Oh, I forgot. Um, if you watched last time's video, I did get uh, some pumpkin and because there was some that had already been carved, I wanted to use it up quickly before it, it got gross, even by my standards. So let me flip you around. We're probably going to get a worm ball. So there was a off video feeding. Um, also, this is that packing blanket. It's making good progress. So there was an off video feeding of some pumpkin because it had to go. So we might not end up feeding them anything extra. You can tell they're getting into that packing blanket. Okay, so this pumpkin has got definitely some worms in there that are working on it. I'm gonna kind of put these big chunks off to the side so that I can reestablish the feeding zone. So if you don't do a wedge system, uh, let me know in the comments, what do you do? What is your favorite way of having a worm bin? Ooh, wait, is that a worm ball? Let's see. And in case you're wondering, if you're new here, what is the deal with the worm ball? It's just a feeding frenzy like sharks, uh, but for worms and no teeth. Okay, that's that compostable tape. Kind of turns into jelly before it disappears entirely. Okay, still flipping. You can tell there's a lot more worms here. And also the moisture is way higher. And that's by design. That's what we want. We want the feeding end of the worm wedge to be much wetter. Uh, they are able to feed. Now this pumpkin stem is like two years old now. Okay, there we go. Now, there we go. That's where all the worms went. Can you hear them? 
sounds like Rice Krispies. So, let's see, still going through here. From the actual last feeding that was puree, I'm not seeing a whole lot. Oop, oh, I just messed up my own worm ball, man. So there's a piece of pumpkin. If there's ever any question as to what the favorite food is of the worms, any sort of pumpkin or squash is gonna be a big win. More packing blanket. Okay, but the puree feeding is gone from the actual feeding three weeks ago. There's a couple little crumbs of something there. I'm not sure what that is. All right, good deal. Good worms. So we're just gonna put all this down at the bottom. I still think they could probably use a little bit of food. I think this one piece of pumpkin is not gonna be enough. So let's hang on and get them some food. Okay, so I put a, a note out on Facebook that I was looking for pumpkin and a couple of people came through for me and said they were ready to start decorating for Christmas and that I could absolutely come get their pumpkins from Halloween. So some of that's where that candle comes from. They were carved up and um, you can tell they've already started to mold. They're pretty squishy. This one's going to take a while. So that's our feeding for today. Let me get them some bedding to cover this. Now this is just shredded paper. I'm out of coconut core again, and it has been wetted down with the uh, kelp meal or seaweed meal. Okay, now these are the bits that we sifted out. So I got those wet again, and then I'm gonna make a sandwich out of that and give them some more bedding. All right, there we go. Now, hang on, let's go see the newest bin of the ENC that we're going to use to create the vermi wedge. Okay, just to give you a look at what this all looks like right now, this is the finished end, that is the feeding end, and what we're gonna do here is really try and get things separated really well, put the unfinished stuff down there like this, and make sure that we have good divisions so that when I move it over to the vermi wedge, it can kind of have a kickstart to its function, not function, to its functional parts. So the vermi wedge will start out with a mostly finished uh, in process and a new. So let's get going and work on this. Okay, so I'm gonna lightly scrape off anything that's a covering. Uh, believe it or not, the mouse pick apocalypse continues. I think we're down to the the end of it, but I, I think I'm making a superior race of mice that are too smart to get caught in a mouse trap. I think I've caught all the dumb ones, and now the ones that are left are the ones that are are just too smart. These worms in here uh, were given to me by New Soil. So this whole bin is a new genetic line of European night crawlers from me. My other ones were from Northeast Worms. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong, did they merge? Or did they become subsidiaries? Or what happened there? I meant to do some research on that, but I thought you guys might know more details. All right, now that is a bit dry. So we're going to add some water to that soon as we get our defined ends because even though it's done and I would like it to be dry I don't really want it that dry because when the when the castings get too dry then you're at risk of uh, killing the the whole point of worm castings which is the biology the microbes the bacteria the fungi bin critters uh, and they can't live without some degree of moisture, so I don't really want it to be super, super dry. So I'm just going to keep moving things over. Okay. Yeah. Still looking pretty finished here. A few worms. 
but it's looking good. So we'll have some good separation for when I get that finished and I'll be able to just move this over in buckets, hopefully three buckets. The nearly finished, the in process, and then the new should all be able to be in their own buckets. All right, let me move you over and let's look and see what the next two regions look like. Got that packing material in the boxes. I think I'm gonna just, for this stuff that's super dry, I'm gonna put that in the bucket of water that was left over from the bedding that I made. That should help it become in process a little bit better. Because this doesn't have any holes in it, I really do have to manage all of the moisture through the inputs. So when things get super wet, I have to put in dry things. And then when it gets too dry, I have to either re-wet things or add water, which I don't like to do because it does turn into a soup. I will, but I'd, I'd prefer not to. I prefer to change the, the inputs so that there's no extra water that could potentially uh, turn anaerobic on me. Because as I discussed earlier, the worms breathe air just like we do. They just do it through their skin. And although they can live in really, really wet stuff, in fact, they prefer it for breeding, um, if it's anaerobic and things have started to rot where there's a lot of ammonia, uh, even if it's damp, they won't be able to live because the ammonia will kill them. So it's not just wet and dry. You also have to think about the decomposition process and the effect it has on the worms. Ooh, got a little bit of a worm ball there. Not sure what they're all hanging out in. Yeah, that's just a solid ball of worms. I don't know what they're doing. All right, we're going to bury them back under there a little bit. And... Oop, more. More worms. Yay! Good worms being cute for the camera. I mean, it is a worm channel. The idea is to see how my worms live, etc. And if we don't see worms, then... I don't know. What's the point? All right, let's dig you guys back in there. They don't really like the light, and they don't like to be exposed. So I'm trying to be a little respectful and give them their desired environment. Yeah, the uh, eggshell crusher, a.k.a. the blender, died at one point, and so, yeah, those eggshells are going to be there for a year or so. But, you know, that's what happens in nature, right? Okay, so let's start rebuilding this and get them some food. Okay, so I'm going to put that really dry stuff down here that has been re-moistened with the, the water left over from making the last batch of bedding. Just so that I don't end up with a bunch of... I don't want to have to transfer things that are kind of rotting as I would if I had put pumpkin in here. So I'm just gonna give them some worm chow that also has some grit in it. And then let's get them the rest of that bedding. Got that wet again. So now, hopefully, this is the plan. Next time we see this, it will be moving over. So we have the new end here where we just put the bedding and some worm chow. We have the in-process stuff here that's probably three, four months old. And then the mostly finished end right over here that is probably up to six months old. And this is how we are going to transfer it. Chunk, chunk over to the vermi wedge in the next video when you see these worms. Well, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell for notifications. If you wanna see more of this system, I have a playlist right over here. And if you don't wanna see that, YouTube thinks strongly that you're gonna to wanna to see this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody, have a good day. And for those of you that are still sticking around, uh, here I am still in process. You gotta break some eggs if you wanna make cake, right? So the, the big shelf is right there now. And the seed starting tent is here, chock full of junk. 
then this is going to get turned into shelves for the peppers. And then the vermi the worm factory is going to go up on one of those shelves. And then this area right here is going to be where the vermi wedge is. Hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer underneath that grow light that I was given for my peppers. And it actually kind of looks like they're going to dry out before they ripen all the way. So uh, I foresee making some dried peppers in the future. But it is possible to, to get them to ripen inside. Here's some of my Jay's Peach Ghost Peppers. And they did ripe here, ripen here in the basement. And you can see the little flowers over there. Some of them are still flowering in the basement here because it is 73 degrees. That lamp is putting off quite a bit of heat. And there's next year's sweet potatoes that are just gonna hang out in the basement um, making slips for me all winter. All right, there you go.